Happy, happy Wednesday. It is a Wednesday. It is a windy Wednesday here in Pittsburgh, but we're happy that you decided to join us here on Hope Today. I am Corey, and this is Tom, and we're going to talk about some very, very significant topics to get today. But first, I want to say again, even though it's the 10th day in January, Happy New Year again. I hope that you have setting some new systems and some new goals in your life uh, as we go through. Uh, some people do a New Year's resolution, yeah. but I want to call it like a New Year's revolution. Okay. where you're continually putting yourself in a position to fight against old habits, old systems, because you have a vision for your life. I know I have a vision for my life. What about you, Tom? You have a vision for this year, specifically uh, some personal well, things? I mean, some personal goals. I mean, I, I had mentioned uh, last week we joined the gym, you know, along with everybody. I mean, we were down there January 1st, the first <laughs> day, you know, yeah. we were down there. And, uh, you know, in the summer, we're always bike riding, but in the winter, we, we're, yeah. we, we lay about too much, you know, so uh, yeah. it was, it, it's going to be good. And, you know, always to read the Word of God, uh, to, to pray and to, to lift uh, things up more. And, you know, you talk about windy. I can hear, you know, you guys can't hear it, but we can hear the wind is whipping outside yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if that's an end times prophetic thing, but we're going to be talking about that. You know, Jesus told us to be aware of the times and the seasons. But as Christians, what can we do in the situation we find ourselves? How do we live that out? Well, Jordan Wells is going to be with us. He's written a novel called The Messengers, Unlock Ancient Secrets That Could Hold the Key to the Future of America. So we're going to be talking with Jordan, talking about that, about the book, and about what he sees as the prophetic timeline that we're on. It's going to be a great discussion. Yeah, and this is a very, very valuable time to be able to hear from the Lord. Because I just really feel like, and you may feel that as a believer, that God is really, really calling his ones that are to him, his sheep. He's really, really calling them more than ever. And so if there's things in your life that you have been just, you know, just playing with, flirting with. God is really calling for those things to come into a surrender. He's saying, hey, listen, you know, there's been grace. And sometimes we get a little bit, you know, over gracey. Okay. We're like, oh, well, thank God. God will forgive me. But at this time, God is really call calling for repentance and surrender of some things. So we hope that today's topic today would really bring in a fire inside of you uh, as we uh, discuss more. So we got a game. Uh, we do. So you, you said the word surrender. Well, we're not going to surrender right now because <laughs> we're going to play Stump the Host. <laughs> So you need to play along with us. We have not seen these questions. We have not been prepped in any way. And these are revelation and end times questions. So Lord help us. Here's the first one. To whom was the book of Revelation addressed to? Okay, okay, now, there were several churches. Well, there were the seven churches. Those yes. are the first three chapters, okay. you know, or the first few chapters there were the seven churches. You wanna go with that? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that because, I mean, Jesus started talking about the candle lights being extinguished, so he was generally talking about that. I, I know he's speaking to everyone, but, I would, I would say those seven churches, All that right, was a representation. Let's, let's say the seven churches. All right, uh -huh. All right that's good, you know, <laughs> including the church in Philadelphia. Isn't yes. that interesting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to Pennsylvania even then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we need it. We need it. All right, here we go. So in Revelation chapter 10, what did John do with the little book that was given to him by the angel? He ate it. He ate it. He ate, he ate, it, ate it, right? <laughs> We're going to say as our final answer, he ate it. He ate it. How about that? Oh, 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 know, we're, it, uh, we're killing it, it. You know, it was, what was it, sweet? But it, it was, it, it was it, sweet it, to take, but then it was bitter. Bitter in his stomach. Yeah. yeah. Interesting yeah. stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Corey, he's got his revelation down I'm here. I'm ready. I'm Let's ready. Let's go with our last one here. <laughs> I hope you're playing along. A great wonder appeared in heaven. It was a woman clothed with the sun. What was her crown made from? Ooh. Wow. Ooh, wow. What was it? What was her crown made from? You got anything here? I, what, can I get a hint? Let me read that again. Yeah, let me, yeah, it, let's, let's read that again. A great wonder appeared in heaven. It was a woman clothed with the sun. What was her crown made from? Mm. Uh, Lord, I need to read my word. Let's say, uh, <laughs> let's say the, the, I don't know, the prayers of the saints. I have no idea. That would, either prayers of the saints or would it be, would it be like a, 
mar not marble, um, pearl? No, no, I it wasn't. No We're going to go with your answer. The prayers of the <laughs> We're going to go with the prayers of the saints. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 12 stars. 12 stars, yeah, that, that, I was. I, I, I have to plead ignorance yeah, on that one. I, I was not getting that. One. That wasn't happening. <laughs> well, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Listen, now, <clears throat> let's, let's now check in with Sydney and see what she has coming up on this week's edition of the Glory Hour. Hey family, it is Sydney here and I am super excited for episode five of the Glory Hour. We are getting into the power and the prayer of fasting for breakthrough. I'm so excited because we have Dr. Jennifer Miskoff. She's joining us. She's gonna break down how the sacred spiritual practice is a supernatural gateway so we can fast that we experience and encounter the glory of God, how it leads us into consecration of being baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And also she gets into, which is very sobering, how fasting, prepares us for persecution. I wasn't ready to hear that, but it was really deep what she was sharing. And I believe that insight will even speak something into the inside of you to know why now is the time and the hour that God wants us to draw closer to him. And one of the best ways is through developing not just a practice of fasting, but a lifestyle of fasting. You're gonna hear more about her lifestyle of fasting and what is birth in her life. It's really inspiring. And also we're gonna talk a little bit about how the oil of the Holy Spirit comes forth when we get crushed and how that is necessary. The crushing, the breaking, the crises in our lives draws us closer to God because you know what y'all, God is calling us now more than ever before to be hungry, to seek after him because he is on the move. Revival is happening. There's an awakening of the Holy Spirit and outpouring like never before. And it is time for us to get on God's times table. It's time for us to be laid down lovers of the Holy Spirit, to surrender all so that we can be empty vessels, that we can go out and be the light and share the good news of Jesus. So y'all, it's gonna be good prayer and fasting for breakthrough. Don't miss it. Coming up today on Wednesday at 3 p.m. on Cornerstone Television Network's YouTube channel. And as always, it streams after that too. So if you can't check, catch it at 3 p.m., be sure to catch it later and share it with your friends too. I love y'all. See you at the Glory Hour. Well, I hope you'll catch Sydney on the Glory Hour on the, our YouTube channel. Well, our next guest is known as a prophetic voice to this generation that carries the presence of God. Jordan Wells is also an author, and he has a new fictional end times novel out called The Messengers. Unlock ancient secrets that could hold the key to the future of America. He joins us now to share about his new book, along with the current prophetic events and how they line up with biblical times. Jordan, welcome to Hope Today. How you guys doing? God bless you. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, before we get to the book, and I'm fascinated that you wrote it as a novel, because yeah. I love novels. I mean, I love, I love, yeah. you know, just uh, seeing where, where they go. But let me ask you about your own life, your own spiritual background. Well, I, um, I was saved at 18. I had a drug overdose, um, overdosed on uh, K2. I grew up in church, but fell away from the Lord, got into drugs, partying, you know, all the horrible things that teenagers do. And God just uh, would begin to call me to preach about 17 years old. And I was like, Joan, I ran from the call of God. I said, I don't want to be no preacher. They don't make no money. I remember somebody <laughs> tell me that, you know, because my dad, you know, he, you know, he was kind of, you know, he sold drugs. And so I was always around money. And so I said, I don't want to, I don't want to be no preacher. I thought all preachers just broke. They just walk around, you know, and serve the church. And so I said, I don't want to do that. Somebody said, you're going to be a preacher when you get I said, I don't want to be a preacher. They, they don't make no money. But God got, got a hold of me. And uh, I had an overdose on K2. And I heard the voice of God say uh, to preach the gospel and tell my people I'm coming back soon and prepare the way. And um, I said, Lord, if you don't, you know, if you, you save me, I'll, I'll preach the gospel. And I did. 18, from 18 years old on, I've, I've been preaching the gospel uh, now almost over a decade. And uh you know, preaching all around the world now, and I just appreciate God for, for how He saved me. Because I tell people, if He can save me, He can save anybody. Yeah, I love that. Don't yeah. you? Don't you love the? Uh, it says the, ar the Lord's arm is not so short that He cannot save. Mm -hmm. So He reached you right where mm -hmm. you were. Yeah, he, he reached me, and you know the thing I tell people is, God reached me in a place where I wasn't looking for Him. Mm, you know, I was right. not looking for God. I was not, I, I didn't have some super spiritual, as prophetic as they, people feel like I am. Right. I didn't have some super, I wasn't the supernatural person. I wasn't this, I had a basic childhood when it comes to uh, just, you know, went to church every now and then. I can't remember one sermon I heard growing <laughs> up in church, um, you know, but I always had a love for the Lord. Mm. 
And when I got saved, I remember I was dating this girl. I was uh, uh, moved out of home at a young age. I was, you know, out there. And, um, and I remember crying out to the Lord. I was suicidal. And I said, God, I need you. You know, I need you. I, I, I can't go on like this. I don't want to live like this anymore. And, I'm, and God, he saved me. And he heard my prayer. He said, the, uh, David said, I called on the Lord. He answered me. He heard my prayer. And he heard my prayer. And I just fell in love with Jesus. And, I, and I've been... It's been a love affair ever since. Wow. Love, I, you know, I love, I love him, and uh, that's why, you know, I say the things I, you know, I'm willing to speak for the Lord. You know, I don't have any church in me. You know, any, yeah. I just, I got, he, he saved somebody out of out of the world. I mean, yeah. I mean, just, you know, nobody would have considered me a preacher. Yeah. I got kicked out of every, I got kicked out of several high schools. Yeah. I was fighting. I got expelled from schools. I was literally, my own father told me, you will be either dead in jail. Mm. Um, that's my child. That was, that was, that was what I experienced. And so, you know, he didn't say that to be me. It was just the path I was on. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be popular. I, I just, you know, and, um, but God, you know, he, he, he saves the most least likely. Mm -hmm. He chooses the foolish things of this world True. to confound the wise. See, you know, I, I just have to say this. Mm -hmm. There's probably somebody watching that has felt that suicidal thing pull on him. We know that's a, a real problem among young people now, those feelings, those, those you know, the, the hopelessness. What would you say to that person? What would you say to that person about hope? I would say that Jesus is, the, is, is really, you can have a, I think what I had to realize is that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus because sometimes the church preaches about a person like he's not a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like a church language, but I've met a person in my room. Mm -hmm. I, I met a person, a real person mm -hmm. that gives you the presence of God. Yeah. And I fell in love with a person in his presence. His presence, the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. So I have a joy that the world can't take from me. No matter what we see going on in our country, no matter what we see going on in our own personal life, the joy of God has been consistent in my life. Yeah. And I've went through some crazy stuff, even being saved mm -hmm. uh, and being in ministry, but the Lord is joy. His presence is what I eat on every morning, yeah. every day, throughout the day. I don't never leave fellowship with God. I'm in fellowship with God with y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, he's right. with me now. And mm -hmm. so I think when young people understand that what you're looking for, you can't find in drugs, mm -hmm. you can't find in sexual relationships, you can't mm -hmm. find any of those, and you only can find it in Jesus Christ yeah, in the right. presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so, so, so Jordan, being young, and I, I actually started in ministry at a young age. I, mean, I, was, I was 15 years old, did it for 19 years. So I was young, I was PK, yeah. parents were pastors and everything like that. How have you been able to walk through your walk in ministry, but also deal with the, the humanism, the, the, the aspects of pressure and stuff like that? How have you been able to walk with God in that process of him sanctifying you? Because you know that takes time. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has your relationship with God been going through ministry and also letting him sanctify your life? Well, I think the, the thing that, that helped me was that I grew up seeing a lot of hypocrisy in church. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I got saved, I was almost told God, I, I'm, I have a, a personality where I'm like either hot or I, I don't do the middle thing. I'm either yeah. hot or cold. You know, yeah. I have like an addictive personality. You know, mm. when I'm in some, I'm in it and it helps me kind of. Mm. So I haven't been perfect. But I think one thing is that I was mentor, right? I, a woman of God won me to the Lord who's a nurse. She was a holy woman. I mean, I never seen her. I mean, if she sinned, I haven't seen it. You know, yeah. she was one of those people, you know, like a modern day Mother Teresa, you know. Yeah. But um, she taught me about holiness. She taught me about the Lord and loving Jesus. And I would say for me, it's always gone back to that. Even when I made mistakes, even when I've fallen short of his glory, as we all do, you know, one thing is consistent. When you're in love with a person, the Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yeah. So loving Jesus, if you do it religiously, it's not going to work. Yeah. This right. is too hard to do right. yeah. in your own strength. Yeah. You have to love Jesus with everything, more than your mother, more than your parents, more mm -hmm. than everything in this world. Mm -hmm. It can't even compare to loving him. And mm -hmm. so when you love him like that, Every, it becomes e not easy, but even if you slip, you're like, I can't stay there. Yeah. Because, yeah. His, uh, man, I'm on a race. And, you know, when you're racing on a 100 meter, your, your goal is the finish line. Mm -hmm. And you have to be fixated on that. If mm -hmm. you're not, you'll be caught up on this and that and this and that and this doctrine and that doctrine. He said the winds of doctrine, the Paul, you know, the apostle said the winds of doctrine. And, and so my, my eyes are set. I, I have a goal. Yeah, that's yeah. to win as many people to the Lord as I can before He returns. Now, well, you had said yeah. something. I'm sorry. You had said something a little bit earlier. You know about your your father when you yeah. were younger. You like you were used to seeing money. Your dad yeah. was, you know, um, uh, selling drugs and things like that. 
How did your relationship with your father or your relationship with your family become impacted once all of a sudden Jordan's like, yo, Jordan going to church? <laughs> Jordan, Jordan fasting? Jordan preaching? Like, yeah. what's going on? Was it, was it weird for friends and family when they're like, yo, what's really happened in your life and things like that? How has that impacted your family, your change for God? Well, it impacted my family uh, uh, not as much in the beginning because I, I, had, I was actually diagnosed with ADHD growing up. Mm. Um, and so I, most people thought I would never, my, I had teachers say, you'll never be anything. You, you know, I, think, I couldn't read. You know, they think I, they thought I'd be, I was always smart, but I was, you know, class clown. And so they didn't, they, I went through like six different colleges or universities. I would go, go to college, drop out, go to, so they thought it was a, just another fad, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest. And uh, it took a while for my lifestyle, but then my brother, I tell a story, my brothers and the cousins, they picked me up to go to a party and I still was trying to be, you know, in the, out of the world, but I was still trying to be in the world because I didn't want to lose everybody, you know, mm. like a lot of young people. So I go in the car, I have my suit on and I have a big Bible. I took it to the club, we're on our way to the club. And I'm yelling at them to turn down the music and <laughs> they dropped me back off at home. <laughs> so that, that kind of sums up. Now, my, my relationship with God, because God is publicly, you know, shown his glory. Mm -hmm. People everywhere, I have cousins reaching out for ministry and people who are still in my, I have a cousin that was literally in the drug lifestyle, selling mm -hmm. drugs, who literally reached out to me for a, a personal counseling ministry session. Gave his life to Christ. My mom's relationship got a lot stronger with the Lord. My brothers, uh, my cousins jump on my, it's on my YouTube live, my Facebook lives. My whole family has been transformed by my relationship with God because one thing about Jordan is I'm never going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness, not just out anywhere I go. I'm a voice, even in my own household. Yeah. So that's just me. Well, I love that. I love that, you know, your whole, this is a great base for what we're going to talk yeah. about because this is what really matters, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Each person, we're going to talk about the end times here, but, but your relationship with God is what the main thing that we're start, we want to start from is that you, that what you would know him, that you would love him, that you would have that. It, knowing all about the end times isn't going to matter if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what's going to matter it's most not. of all. Right. So let me ask you about, let me ask you about the messenger. Why'd you write this as a novel? Again, I think it's a great idea. A lot of people write books about the end times or prophetic things. Why, why as a novel? Because I think that Jesus is our, is, is just, I'm so amazed by the ministry of Jesus and how he taught parables. You know, parables was a way, Jesus sometimes will say some very hard things. And I don't think we understand some of the things he said in those parables. And that's why he would say a parable. And then when he would explain it, everybody would walk away. When he would initially say the parable, people would receive it and they'd be, oh, wow, that was wonderful teaching. Mm -hmm. But in, when he would break down what the parable actually means, they said the crowds would thin out. So parable is a, so a novel for me was a way to release what God was showing me for America and this generation in a way that people can understand it and receive it. People love a good story. People love a good drama. So I, I, I felt like God gave it to me. I was writing it and it was coming out like I wasn't liking how it was sounding. And so God told me, write it as a novel, write it in a story, take people on a journey throughout history, the history of Israel, the history of America, the history of the church, and take people on a, on a walk and then release prophetic truths throughout this story of different characters, biblical figures that we know that we all can relate to. So how's that apply to the everyday Christian? So we've got the everyday Christian mm -hmm. going to church, trying to make ends meet, trying to follow the Lord. How's your book and the prophetic message apply to that person? Well, one of the, the core purposes of the messengers is that we all are called to be a messenger. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we know that messengers in the Bible were, you know, the Old Testament prophets, but everybody has, is not a prophet, but people have a prophetic message. You can be a prophetic message on, messenger on your workplace, on your job. You can be a prophetic messenger in anywhere. You can be a doctor, but really the prophetic message is about being a first thing, a prayer warrior, mm -hmm. a person that prays, a person that spend time with the Lord, uh, really about being an intercessor, a, a person that prays because right now in America, more than anything right now, we need prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need yes. people that are watchmen on the wall, people that are praying for this country, praying for revival, praying for uh, this generation to be saved. We mm -hmm. see all the statistics about what's happening here, the economy and different things that are going on. But I believe the, 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 the job and responsibility of the body of Christ is to be, to be praying in this hour more than any other time because I believe God can still 
change our youth, mm -hmm. save our youth, bring revival to our, our nation. And that's what the messengers really is, is a message of revival. Mm -hmm. It's about being a message of hope, a message that in the midst of all the doom and gloom, people that are people saying this and that, what's the future of this and this, mm -hmm. I try to hit it from a different perspective. Yes, I give people the end time perspective of what's coming. I'm not oblivious to that. But at the same time, what are we supposed to be doing? Because the Bible says we are to occupy until he comes. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to crawl in a bunker somewhere and just pray that mm -hmm. Jesus raptures us out of here. <laughs> right. We're supposed to be actively engaged in mm -hmm. praying and fasting. Um, we have a movement called the Joel 2 generation off of Joel, which yeah. is talks about praying and fasting for revival. That whole book is about an end time book about praying and fasting for revival. The main character in the book is named Esther. What is Esther known for? Mm -hmm. There was a spirit of death that came upon the Jewish people to, of Haman, an antichrist spirit that wanted to kill the Jewish people. Well, there's an attack against the church right now. There's a, a cultural attack. There's an attack against truth. But the, the Esther led everybody on a three-day fast and everybody began to pray. Then she said, you are called for a time such as this. And I believe my message to the church is that we are called for a time such as this. This is our greatest hour. This is our time for the church to arise, to become the church of Jesus Christ, to stand in our place like Esther and to pray and fast for this nation to be to be changed and to uh, even prepare the church for the days ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's absolutely powerful what you're saying. And I just want to talk to you about some things that God has been speaking to you mm -hmm. right now, even in correlation to the book mm -hmm. that, <clears throat> you know, 2024 seems already yeah. like like a year of exposure. Right. And, and when we say exposure, I don't know if you've seen any yeah. of the Cat Williams yeah. discussion and talk about on Club Shay Shay and yeah. everything like that, yeah. where he really began to just un, un, uncover a lot of mistruths yeah. that have been said. Yeah. But I was looking at it through spiritual eyes as well in regards to there being a lot of ministries that haven't been operating fully yeah. as the ministries that God has really called them to, to, to be. Yeah. Like even in Revelations, we were playing the game, you know, uh, Stump the Guest, where it was, you know, who is Jesus talking to in that, the seven churches, you know, yeah. he was saying in many senses, if you don't change this, we're going to extinguish your candlestick. Uh, what do you feel God is speaking in this, gen this time, 2024, what should the church be doing right now to prepare the way and to occupy well, this is a time of exposing, and I always tell people that God is raising up. God will use anybody. He'll use a donkey, he'll use Balaam, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and God will use anybody. And when I say that, people get offended, but the thing is, God will use anybody, and I believe he's in, even uh, Cat Williams spoke, he said there would be exposure, and I prophesied and I released a word that God was exposing. Why does God expose? God exposes so that everything that is hidden can be brought to the surface so there can be repentance, mm -hmm. so there can be transformation. Right. God is not only exposing, because there's been a lot of people doing church, but we, it's time to become the church. Right. And so God is exposing <clears throat> because we thought that it was just, I told people, God don't need our help to win souls. Mm -hmm. And so God is, is going to be exposing. This is going to be the greatest year of exposure because God wants to bring back two things to the church. He wants to bring back prayer mm -hmm. and he wants to bring back the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. With the fear of the Lord comes the glory of God. And I believe the church is entering the greatest hour of glory, but we, there's got to be a shaking before glory. God always shakes before the glory comes because the, if you read Hosea, he said the temple, the latter glory will be greater than the former. So I believe that's what God is preparing us for. You know, yes, the world's going to be shaken. I, really, I believe there's going to be a lot of things for us to pray about. You know, there's going to be exposure, like Cat Williams said, like a lot of the prophetic voices are saying, like I prophesied exposure, uh, you know, the shaking that's coming, all those things in the economy and different things. But what is the church supposed to be doing? The church is supposed to be on the wall. The church is supposed to be praying, fasting, in the preaching the gospel. I believe this is going to be some of the greatest time of evangelism and harvest we've ever seen. This is going to be some, because people are in the midst of the chaos that's going to be going on in our country. They're looking for a lot. And, and it was a famous, well, what happened with a leader, you know, with, with, with stuff that happened. It was some, you know, controversy that went on with what a leader did in his church. And, and somebody reached out to me and said, I was on my way back to church, but I saw that video and I'm not going there. Mm. Mm. So we're actually trying to become more like the world to win the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you as a person that was in every lifestyle you can name, mm -hmm. it wasn't that that drew me to God. Mm -hmm. It was the raw presence yes. and power of Jesus that won me. We don't need to make Jesus. We don't need to dumb down Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, his presence is enough. Mm -hmm. And I think the church's message, the true church, because there's going to be two churches. 
there's an apostate church that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. And this church is going to compromise. They're going to give themselves over to false doctrine, false teaching. That's in the book as well. Then there's going to be a true church. That church is called the remnant church. And they're going to carry the glory and they're going to carry myths of truth. I was going to ask you about the remnant because we want to be that yeah. remnant. We want to be that. <laughs> Why don't you take that? We just have about two minutes yeah. left in the show. Yeah. Why don't you look into that camera yeah. right there and speak to someone who says who maybe they don't know the Lord or maybe they've been turned off to church. Speak to them what God has for them. Well, I just feel like there might be somebody watching me right now and you might be suicidal. I feel that in my spirit right now. There's somebody watching me. You're suicidal. You, you went through a divorce. You went through and you feel like God is done with you. But I'm here to tell you right now by the spirit of God that God said he's giving you beauty for your ashes, uh, that he's giving you joy. From, it's not too late. Uh, this is going to be a year of restoration for many people where things you lost in 2023, you lost your marriage, you lost your business. Your business maybe was affected by the economy. Somebody watching me, you said, I lost my business. My business hasn't been the same since COVID. My church hasn't been the same. But I believe by the spirit of God that God is right now is releasing releasing hope to people that 2024 is going to be your greatest year. 2024 is going to be your breakthrough for your marriage. Your marriage is going to be restored. Your family is going to be restored. Somebody else is watching me. I feel like your children, your children have walked away from the Lord. You, they, you've been praying for them and praying for them. And you say, God, as you get closer to return, I want my family to be saved. God says he's saving families. He's saving the prodigals. The prodigals are returning to, uh, at home in this. And I just pray for you right now. I pray for that pastor that wants to give up on ministry. That pastor that said, I've been praying, I've been fasting in my church. You know, there's been a church split here and, and a church split there. But God says that I'm going to restore you because you've been faithful. You've been faithful and I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. I'm going to give you back every year that the locust and the cake of worm and palm worm. I pray for you right now that God will restore you. I pray right now that God would heal you. I pray that God would deliver you. Whatever you're struggling with, depression has to go. Suicide has to go. Anger has to go. This is your time. This wow. is your season. Wow. Jesus wow. Jesus well, 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 we're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time on the show, even though the Lord is never out of time. Okay. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much thank for being so with us. It was powerful. Yeah. Thank you. And, and for you, take what Jordan just said and say, I want to be that remnant. I want to be that watchman. I want to be that prayer warrior. I want to be the one that brings hope to people all around me. On tomorrow's Hope Today, politics for people who hate politics. Political commentator and author Denise Grace Getzum shares insights on how Christians can effectively and honorably engage in politics. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.